It seems like pretty simple cuts, doesn't it? Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and you're making shavings. You know, I went a week ago, I was in Phoenix, Arizona, for a symposium, National Symposium. And it was an interesting time, because I ran across a whole lot of people trying to teach woodturners how to do art. And that seems to be where things are going. But the problem is we're leaving a lot of people in the back and we're not helping them actually get the good turning. I saw turnings there that I should have never seen. I saw pieces sanded to all get out, lost all the crispness of lines because they were poorly cut and then sanded to a finished shape. I guess the main thing I'm trying to get to is you can't do this until you learn how to use your tools and that goes to what I've been saying since I got started I can't teach you art but I can teach you how to use your tools that's what we're going to do today oh well, wait 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 before we get started I'm in catching a little flack about safety equipment you're looking at what I use most of the days to turn. Right there. My safety glasses. These are prescription bifocals. I got them at Sam's Wholesale Club. And I bought a couple of pair when I ordered them. They're okay. They're fairly comfortable. Not the most comfortable glasses I've ever worn. But they do protect side, top straight on and they make me look so damn good I mean you gotta see you gotta go along with that really but I mean catch some hell about not using a face shield all the time well I don't think you you and even a guy over there I don't think you can dictate to me what I have to wear to be safe in my own shop. Would a safety shield work? If it was iffy work and if I thought I needed it, it's right there and I do put it on. Do I need to have a SWAT tactical helmet with a polycarbonate lens and a face guard? If I'm turning something that's pretty crappy wood and I think it's going to come apart, yeah. But guess what? I don't turn really crappy wood. I don't really worry about it coming apart. Even when I get into hats, I'm real particular about the hat blank I use. Fancy bowls and stuff. And just because somebody drops a chunk of wood in the driveway doesn't mean I have to turn it into something. So wear the safety gear that's appropriate for you. Okay? Just the stuff that's appropriate for you. And while you're on my case, I sat in demonstrations at the AAW. I sat through eight rotations. Six out of eight guys were wearing their wedding ring. Six out of eight had their wedding ring still on. Now, if you're committed to that lady so much that you will list, risk life and limb, limb, that you're going to wear that ring, keep it on. But if you respect life itself and you plan on not getting hurt, the first thing you need to do, take off that bling. Get rid of it. i got to ask you which more important, having all your digits or not. All right, let's get into using some tools. <coughs> Number one, and I just read an article on this. Someone said sharpening tools, the best way to go is one of these wet grinders with the jig and a rig and all that. You ain't got the bucks. Let's not go there. Let's talk about where you need to go. I'm going to talk very basic sharpening. Very basic. This is an 8-inch grinder. I bought this grinder at Lowe's. 
there's this is a port of cable because they told me they stopped handling the Delta. The Delta's back for only $111 right now. But you can get this or the Delta. I don't have the guards on it because I'm running a CBN wheel. I have two CBN wheels, a fine and a coarse. I rarely ever use the coarse. I don't grind tools, I sharpen tools. Big difference, really big difference. So, this tool will run from 1850 to 3400 RPMs. I'm running it on the lowest speed possible, 1800. Why? Because I'm not grinding tools, I'm sharpening tools. You got that? I'm only retouching the edge, okay? Now, to get it in shape, you can also get it in shape with this. This won't overheat the tool. Takes a minute longer, but you'll be there. The other rig, this is the Blackhawk jig. The complete, I'm sorry, the Blackhawk rig. The complete rig. A base. This is the frame for doing the Ellsworth Eversera grind. This is a Blackhawk jig. We put the tool in the jig. On the side of the rig, on the side of the rig is a two inch offset. This sets it two inches. Okay? Then I make sure I'm square going across here and I am fine. That is ready to sharpen. I can do the same thing with 80 grit corborundum wheels, triple X by Norton. Don't worry about the color, that's not important. If you're running on low speed and you're only touching up the edge. Now, I set it with the jig. Let's look at something. You see one facet on there, right? Okay. In the pocket. You see one facet on there? That's why we're using the rig and the jig. That was two passes. One, two. I can get away most days with a single pass. And that gives me a razor sharp edge, and there's not a whole lot of steel laying on the floor below the grinder. I didn't waste it. I put a very uniform grind, a very even grind, and this is the one we need to do the cutting on this piece. But that was the That was the Ellsworth grind. Let's do an Ellsworth slash Eversera. Folks say, you never heard of that? Nope. Never heard it because I created it. You won't find it in the book anywhere. You probably won't find a video besides mine on it. But here's the deal. About seven or eight years ago, I went to a class with an awesome Israeli turner named Eli Eversera. Eli Eversera. He is very, very talented. And he's a good instructor. And I went to his class and he showed how to remove that second level of steel. You see it? That's the second level of steel. He showed how to remove it and get it out the way so we can make some corners. How do we grind that? We just put it back in here and set it two inches, didn't we? Back in a pocket. One pass. Then we move to another pocket in front of the other one. That second pocket removed the excess material. You see that material that's going on the bottom? Missing. I'm smart enough not to touch that because it's a little bit warm. Although, feel free to touch it if you need to. That just got that steel out the way. 
so I can turn a corner with this piece. That was all it took to sharpen this gouge. All it took. A walk over using the jig and the gauge block. I set it up, hit my grinder, take the edge off, take the, the steel off, go back to turning. No whetstone, no regrinding, no honing, no polishing, no lapping, no strapping, nothing. We just got this thing in shape to cut quickly. And if it's quick and easy, follow me here, if it's quick and easy, you'll be more apt to go to the grinder and touch up an edge than to try to make a dull tool make one more pass. Because let me tell you, that one more pass, that's the one that's going to bite you in the butt. Really. Wait, I could do something right. One more pass or kick your ass. One more. No, okay, we won't do that. But, if it's sharp, it cuts. If it's not sharp, it just tears wood away. Your last cut, what do you want it to do? Slice or tear? Me, I'm in for that slice thing. With the one half inch bar, and that's how these things are measured. One half inch bar, um, Ellsworth gouge. This is from D Way Tools. Dave at D Way Tools makes both of these tools and a handful more. And when you're looking to order, call Dave and tell him what you want. Let him drive you in the right direction. I'm going to have a late speed up at around uh, 900 RPMs. I'm going to I'm going to hold the handle way down. That was a lot of combination grain. Combination because it's running right through like this. You can't see that. All right, running through like this. So here I was on side grain, here I was on end grain, side grain, end grain, yada, yada, yada. Okay, all of that was a nice clean cut. Nice clean scrape, uh, slice. Nice pieces came off, very not happy with it. This is the bottom of a bowl. All right, now. I want you to get back in there again and see what happens when I make this cut. Is it going to come into focus? All right. Now, to get this cut, speed 900 RPMs. I don't want the tool to go straight in. That would be a very bad thing. Let me show you that again. This will cut wood. Mm, pretty good curls coming off. This slices wood. Either will work, but the slice gives me a better finish and because I was riding a bevel, riding a bevel and going across here, I have a much more uniform uh, cut. Again, riding the bevel, let's let you need to understand that because bevel doesn't make the cut, bevel helps guide the cut. That's misleading. So let's get that out the way. That's all bevel. Roll it over. See what I did? We'll go over here, we'll pick it up. You 
want to go deeper on the side of the cut, go from here, keep it open. When I get over here, swing the handle. Get out back and sh out, out a little bit and show you something. Yeah, we're going to go around. The si we're going to go around the side of this. We're going to start with it closed, which means this is almost vertical. Gives me a read. Then we're going to open it up. And we're going to start pushing. And we'll go around that corner. the handle. Too much cut. You see, the whole time I was riding this bevel, making this cut, I was reading the bevel and driving it with the handle. This has to move. We have to get the handle out. Um, put it a different position. And we'll go around one more time. The handle drove the bus. The handle. Now, we cut against the grain here for a little bit. Let me get my mock up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just cutting the wood is not enough, or just slicing it is not enough. You also have to slice it in the right direction. Now, all these, see these little pulp pits? Little wood acne it's got right here? That's a new term. All right right here right that was because that's the grain of this wood right there and I went into the grain and broke it off really did just like that went right into the grain the better way to cut this would have been like that so I'm still very early in the piece and I'm still shaping it up but I want to say that that was a good rough and cut. In order to get a good finish and start shaping this thing up, I'm now going to do a good finish cut. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to come around that corner with a sharp gouge that hasn't seen wood yet. And I'm going to get rid of it. Remember, all right, keep an eye on this because let me get in there. See that pitting? That means a lot of sanding. Okay, now. New gouge, new edge.
I didn't want to stop it. No acne. None at all. And that was one pass. See it? The more we go, and the better we slice, the better it will be. I'd like to show you something. I don't believe it's cheating, but it's a great reference. Let's get down to the tool rest here. All right, and I want you to look at something. That's my standard tool rest. Do you see that mark? That mark, when matched up with that, means that is the exact dead center of my piece right there. So my cutter, my tool, will cross if it's this height right at dead center. Okay. Now I don't want that, but I do know that half that distance would put my tip of my blade right there when I come in. See it? Always a good reference. I don't believe in those uh, clamps and all that other crap that they sell to give you that. You got that mark? You can work from there. I'm gonna go in here and slice clean this up a little. Now watch what happens. No pulling up, no pushing down, no jiggling the tool around. None of that was necessary. We were at the center. I'm going to go out here, get that tip way out there. Now, something just happened, you need to see it. You see that? Where's another one? Right there. Right there. Right there. Those lines I caused because I was holding the bevel and not giving it edge. I was worried more about riding the bevel than cutting. So we open the tool up a little bit. Good clean slice. No, 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 no wood acne. No tears, no grips. Good way to slice wood. Essentially, if you'd like to get a good looking piece, you need to have a well cut piece first. Now, remember this that grain comes straight out. When you get over here, it's on the side. So you're still cutting the same grain. But if you cut in a line of the grain, and there's terms of uphill, downhill, across grain, with grain, etc., etc., just think about it. If when you make the cut, it looks like it's torn, then you probably didn't make a slice. You just got wood to come off. And that the key to this whole thing is slice the wood away. Use that tool properly. Understand it. Number one, have it sharp. Dull tools will move wood, 
but not very nicely. So, in essence, I hope we spent a few moments together and I showed you how to do a little wood slicing and you can get to it and get to understand it. Here's the deal. If you put a piece of nice, gorgeous wood up on that machine, and that was just a chunk of poplar I picked up. If you put a gorgeous piece on that machine, you're going to be less inclined to just tear it up and experiment than if you put something that was kind of iffy on a machine. Something you didn't care if you really destroyed or you need to throw in a burn bio when you're done. But that one block of wood will make you a much better turner because you'll understand how the slicing goes, how you move wood, how you get a better finish off of it, what direction you have to go to, how your tool works, and a whole lot more. I hope it helped you out a little bit today as you join me when we were making shavings. I'm Captain Eddie Castle and you take care, be good, see you soon. Don't forget, we're there in Ustream TV. You want the link? Go to my home page. Links on the bottom, live wood journey. Let me tell you a little something about this. This is a Black Hawk rig. The complete rig, the international version, gives you a base, two ends. One is made to hold a gouge for a roughing gouge or a bowl gouge. And the other is made to have two bolts go into it to be the adversary. Ellsworth grind. 50 bucks plus shipping. If you want just a jig, and this is limited time because I need to change the price on these, $15 plus the shipping. And if you want the full size rig, which means I give you the bars, the base, the rig, the other end, all that, $75 plus shipping. That's what it costs. Now, go ahead and do a comparison. Get on all your catalogs and look them up. We're still 30 to 40 percent less than the next guy. And we're giving you equipment you can work with. Alright, if I can help you, let me know. I'm at www.eddiecastellan.com or give me a phone call at this number. Alright, take care.